What's up guys, it's Matt with BleepinJeep.com. Today we're working on some uh, tubes for the cage here. I've decided I'm not gonna show you bending the entire cage or uh, I'm just gonna kinda show you little bits and pieces, mainly because I really have no idea what I'm doing. This is the first cage that I've ever built, uh, so I'm still learning. It's a big, huge learning curve and uh, I don't wanna mess up. It takes my entire brain power to do these offset bends and if I'm trying to mess with the video camera at the same time, I probably would waste 20 foot of tubing trying to get it right. But uh, I've already made one. This is for the front fender. So I'm going to try to make this for the opposite side. It's a complex bend because you have to make a bend and then the next bend has to be offset and then the next one is offset also. So there's uh, one, two, three offset bends all at different angles um, and that's for the front fender. Uh, this one of the ends attaches to the bumper and the other end attaches to the the rock rail. So hopefully if I can figure it out in this video I can uh, show you how to bend the opposite one. It's completely it's just going to be like this one except opposite bends I guess. First thing I did, first thing that I do when I'm bending tube is to clean it up and make it nice and shiny. This stuff comes well it doesn't actually come like this. It's pretty clean when it comes but I store it outside under an overhang and it still gets kind of uh, humid and rust on it. So I just take some um, sandpaper, shine it up, that way it'll have nice good welds and I'll be able to paint it uh, easily whenever it's time for paint. Okay, so let me show you what I've done so far. I've got the, uh, that's called the A pillar up there, the first one. I've got the B pillar in, that's the main hoop. C pillar, D pillar. I'm trying my best to keep this looking like a Cherokee. I've got the, uh, the rock rails there. And inside I've redone the floor panels. They're also boat sides. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen that. So, then I've got uh, these hoops that come up over the uh, rear fenders. The rear is, I can't really get back far enough to show you very well, but the rear is uh, dovetailed. It's very narrow, it's probably, what is that, a foot and a half or two feet wide. And the back. I've been posting pictures of this on um, the forums. Uh, one is on uh, Pirate, one is on Naxja, and I've been posting pictures on my Facebook page and on Instagram, so you can see more if you're interested over there. It looks really good when I put the tires beside it. A lot of people though are saying, you should add this, you should do this. Well, it's not done folks. I'm still in the process of adding tubes, so don't worry. So here is the front fender. This is what we're working on today. There's going to be a bar that comes across straight once I get this these figured out and then I'm going to add uh, some uh, sheet metal in there to cover that up. So that's the piece that we're working on today. I've already got that one built. We need to go ahead and make the other one. Hopefully I can figure that out get it to match exactly. If you get it even the slightest degree off then it's not going to look the same from left to right so it's very difficult at least for me anyway. Alright so let me show you the first step that I did when uh, creating this first tube over here. First thing I did was cut a hole right here so I could slip the tube down in it. Now that helped in two different ways. I think it'll have a better weld there for one but also it helped hold the tube because I had this, you know, giant eight-foot piece of tube just sticking out, and it's hard for me to hold. So by putting it in that hole, I could just lean it up there. Second thing I had to do was figure out where to make this bend. I wanted the bend kind of halfway between uh, the second bend, so I just kind of eyeballed that, made that one, and then cut the tube shorter as I needed to. 
And the third thing I did was add this piece of string. So the string is just about where the hood is going to be when it gets cut. I haven't cut the hood yet, but I will cut the hood shorter. But uh, in the meantime, I put this piece of string right here. It goes from this tube all the way up to where the tube is going to pass right here on the front. So that helps me have an idea of where my uh, bends need to go so that this tube will line up in the right spot. So, uh, so then, it's hard to explain. You take your angle finder basically and you find the angle that you need to bend it. And then you also have to find the offset degree angle and uh, so you put the first bend in, then this piece of tube was sticking up like this. You hold it in place. What I did was mark the uh, string on the back side here with a, with a sharpie. And then I marked the tube on the back side here uh, exactly where that hit. And then that was where my offset was going to be. So when I put it in the bender, I bent away from that, from that uh, mark right there. So. Uh, then I had it sticking straight out here and I just figured where I wanted it to bend to go down and meet the bumper down there. So uh, that string though was really important. That's uh, probably the only thing that helped me get this in the right spot. And that'll also be important when I go to cut the, uh, the hood. I'll probably do a, um, a snap chalk line so that I'll know where to cut it. I'm going to cut it a little bit long, probably roll it under so that it won't just be a sharp edge and that the inside of the, the hood will sit just inside of this tube. Okay, let me show you another tool that you need for bending tube. You need one of these digital angle gauges. Uh, so now that I've got the first one bent, it makes it a little bit easier for me, but let me show you how to measure the bends now. You put your angle gauge on there, you zero it out like that. Then you can hold this vertical 90 degrees Put your angle gauge on there, and whatever that reads, that's a 65 degree bend. Now to find your offset, you lay it back down, put it on there, zero it out, put your angle gauge up here, and what is that? 34.6 degree offset. So I need to bend this at 65 degrees. Uh, with a 34 degree offset. Actually the first one's not going to matter but in reality this one's going to be at the end. So what I'm actually doing is starting over here with just uh, one bend. I forget what this one is but I'll measure all these out. These little lines right here these are where you put um, you put it in the die. So I'll show you here in a minute the, the bender. Um, so you put these in the bender, you line this mark up with the die, and I always put the arrow which way the bend is going to go on. So this is where it m lines up in the die. The arrow shows you that the bend is going to be on this side of that line. And uh, these are what are called cheater bars. I like to make a set of, of these for each bend uh, that I'm going to do. Not each bend, but like I'm gonna. I made one for a 90. I made one for a 65. One for a 45. One for a, probably a 25, and one for a 10 degree bend. So before you put them in the bender, you make sure to mark those. Put them in the bender. So that's your reference point on every single bend. You're gonna put it in the bender at the same spot. You can also cut a notch in there. That way, whenever you need to measure, let's say you're going to put a bend here and it needs to go down to the table. You can put your tape measure in there and see how far uh, how, how far it is to the table. That way when you put it in the bender you can say, okay, it's 11 inches where I need to start my bend. Okay. So, uh, like I said, this isn't a comprehensive uh, how-to on bending. I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing here since I haven't made a video in a while. So uh, let's do it. I'm going to measure these out. We'll put this in the bender and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so this was my first bend. All I need to do is now is put the tubes together since I already have my, my first one here as a template. And I will just mark at the same spot where this red line is. I'll mark on here. 
and the bend is going to go on this side and that's about a 38 degree bend. It's a Pro Tools Model 105 HD uh, with a swag conversion kit and the um, Harbor Freight Air Over Hydraulic Bender. So the first thing you want to do is put it in with the arrow facing in like that. We're going to put uh, the pin in. Then we're going to put this in, strap it down. Alright, next step is you take this uh, bending part. This is what actually um, bends it around. Whenever I hit this uh, button over here, the hydraulic part is going to separate all this. You'll see it here in a minute. This strap is going to hold it and it's going to start pulling it around this die. And then this will, will, this will stay in place, but the die will move around and it will bend it around that die. Okay, now there's a lot of slack in it, so you have to take out the slack first. Like that. Now you want to make sure that that line is in the same spot every time. For me, that's going to be right on the corner of the die. Right there. Now this is DOM tube, it doesn't have a weld line, but usually in general, if you have a non-DOM uh, H H R E W tube that's going to have a line in the top, you want to put that on the very top so you have a reference. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is tighten this down. Make sure it's good and snug there. Make sure all of the play is taken out, which it is. Make sure all these are down. They are. Now make sure that your dial indicator is set at zero. This changes every time so you can just kind of leave it bendable and you just put it on zero every time before you start. Uh, and basically what that is is just a piece of weld wire stuck in there and this is your gauge. So we're starting at zero and we want to go to, uh, what did I say, I'll have to go, oh it was 38. So. We're going to go up to 38, but there's always 5 degrees of snapback, so we're going to go to 38 plus 5, then when we let loose, it's going to come back 5 degrees, so we should be right at 38. Got to tighten it down first. Try that again. All right, I'm at 38, but I want to go five over, so that's going to be 43. I'm going to get my head real close, make sure I watch it carefully. Right there, that's it. Now, per my superstition, you got to give it a little bang, and then loosen it up. Then you can pull this out, set it up here, push it all the way back. Push this out, this one comes out, and you loosen this up right here. Basically the reason we tighten this down was just to keep it from slipping. You don't want that thing slipping in there as it starts to pull around. Okay, and take the strap off, and it'll pop right out. Alright guys, so what's the next step? Well, if I was really good, I could probably just measure all the degrees and the offset and all that, but um, like I said, this stuff boggles my mind. So what I figured is that I would lay this out, I put some magnets up here, and then I put this uh, piece that I'm bending to match up next to it. These lines are in the same spot. These lines I've measured, they're in the same spot. What I've done here I need this to be opposite, so this side will be the inside of the bend, I've marked in, this side I've marked outside, the bend is going to go on this side, that's why the arrow is there, I've marked 38 degrees and this is the top of the tube, once I get it in the bender that might be the bottom, 
I'm not sure if so, I'll just put a mark on the other side exactly 90 degrees or 180 degrees from this. Um, so now, one other thing I can do to make sure I get this right is to is to put this here, zero it out, which I've done, and then I put it up here, and it's exactly 26 degrees. So the offset, offset should be 26 degrees, and I can measure that too when it's in the bender. So hopefully, if I do everything right, I won't mess this up. Okay, so here's the top. That's in, inside, so that's gonna be the inside of the bend, that's right. This will be the outside. I think that's gonna do it right there. Once I get it clamped down, I'll measure this, make sure it's at 26 degrees. Now when you get these bends wrong, it's really frustrating, because this stuff is what, like $6, $7 a, a foot, something like that. It's not cheap stuff, so. get this right the first time so that line right there is on top now you could eyeball that if it wasn't real important but this is pretty dang important so what I'm gonna do is take my angle finder I'll put it right here zero that out because this might not be level then I'm gonna take it set it up here and we're looking for 26 degrees and it's actually right there 26 degrees so that that mark just eyeballing it got me really close exactly on in fact so let's tighten it down and we'll bend it to uh, whatever we're supposed to bend it to need to check that again set this at zero which it is right there Make sure all the slack is out, and we're going to bend this one to 38 degrees. Double check it one more time. So far, so good. Let's put it on the Jeep and check it out. It's gonna be it right there. Bend, bend, and this bend needs to come around, hit the bumper right here. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. I've got this one marked as the inside of the bend. The bend is going to go right here where the arrow is. I've got the start of the bend. I've got the top line there. I've got it 65 degrees. Now this is where it gets a little confusing for me. I zero out the gauge here. So the offset, this is going to tell me the offset, which is exactly at 35 degrees or so. But it's not from over there. It's not from here. The offset is from, uh, we need to take the offset from this tube right here because that's the one that's laying flat so this is where I'm going to put my uh, angle finder and that needs to be 35 degrees 35 degree offset purpose because uh, this was flat it's going to need to be cut at a steep angle down here so that's going to shorten it up quite a bit so I need that extra length so now I just need to mark that cut it hopefully it'll look just like that one all right so you guys probably know this trick already but if not let me show you real quick I need to get it uh, cut the same plane as this I'm probably going to need to do it several times because each time I cut it, it's going to get shorter. It's going to change the angle. 
but uh, to get it close here, what we're going to do is just lay a block down or something, keep the sharpie flat, and we'll just go around like this. And that is the perfect angle that this needs to sit at. Once it gets shorter though, it's probably going to change a little bit. But we'll go ahead and do it several times, make sure it's perfect so we don't have a huge gap to weld. Alright, so I've beveled the bottoms here. I've uh, taken off a little bit here of the grill. Now I'm going to tack them in place. Hopefully I can hold them still and get them in the right spot. I'm using this string right here to line that up. Ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. Wrong helmet. Try that again. Welder's not on. Ah, oh, come on. Okay guys, well that's it for today. I'm just going to leave everything tacked. This whole cage is just tacked in place uh, until I get the whole thing built. I'll go around and weld everything at the end. So I got both sides matched pretty well. Uh, very, very close. I really wish I could get about 10 feet out in front and take a look at it, but I can't because the wall is right here. But as far as I can tell, it's pretty even on both sides. Use those strings to make everything straight. Um, next thing I need to do is figure out how to attach the uh, the grill. I'm also going to continue the tube up here, and I'm going to have a piece of tube probably coming around the front out here like this. But uh, that's going to be for another day. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Check out the website bleepinjeep.com. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. We'll see you next time.